Hi and welcome to part 1 of 3 d 4s introductory tutorial. This video describes the basic interface elements of 3D Equalizer 4 and how the software is structured. Within the following steps, we get to know the main window, preferences, the concept of paints and environments, as well as context menus and how to define shortcuts. Starting 3D Equalizer 4 the first time, the main window is set up by default with a display area containing some buttons, as well as a frame slider with some navigation buttons at the bottom. This element is called the navigation pane and contains several interaction components to change the current frame beside fundamental functions for loading and saving projects, calculation, scripting and opening additional windows. As already mentioned, the area above the navigation pane is called display area. It is used to display basic elements like live action footage, 2D and 3D tracking points as well as more advanced elements like grids for editing distortion or 3D objects like models or OBJ objects. Since it would be very confusing to display all these elements at once, they are separated into various sets. Let's click on menu Manual Tracking to display them. Here we find several predefined sets the so-called controls to modify the display area's functionality according to the task we wish to perform. Please select Auto Tracking Controls. As we can see, the buttons within the display area have been replaced by different buttons for performing auto tracking tasks. The content of the menus atop were modified as well. Let's have a look at some other controls, ending with Manual Tracking Controls. Well, very good! We learned that there are several controls for different tasks. Next, let's have a closer look at the menus and buttons, more precisely the context menus of menu items and buttons. Within 3D Equalizer 4, every menu item or button has a context menu, which can be opened by clicking on it with the right mouse button. Within Manual Tracking Controls, let's do this on button Track. A context menu appears. This one contains two items, more infos and define shortcuts. Let's open some other context menus of buttons and menu items. As we can see, items, more infos and define shortcuts are listed in nearly every context menu, so let's have a closer look. Right click again on button track, then select more infos. A new window was opened the 3D Equalizer 4 online help window. Here we can find information for every function found in 3D E4. If the online help system is open through the context menu, the buttons or function specific help text is pre-selected and displayed within this window. This window is also accessible through menu Windows Online Help Window. Ok, let's get back to the context menu and select the second item, Define Shortcut. Within this requester, we can define or edit a shortcut for the selected button or function. Let me explain the elements in this window. The top text field shows the current function for which the shortcut should be defined. Text field Shortcut displays the currently defined shortcut. The bottom text field contains a list of functions which are already bound to the currently selected shortcut. In 3D4 it is possible for a single shortcut to trigger multiple actions. Let's set a new shortcut for this function by clicking on button Acquire Shortcut, then press key C on the keyboard. We see this shortcut is already used for two other functions, so it would be better to select a different key. Probably T wasn't already that bad. Use shortcut to save the changes, or in this case, save again the old default shortcut. One hint, if a shortcut is defined for a menu item, this will be displayed beside the item. Let's do this for a different item with no shortcut. Right click on Fine Tune All Objects, Define Shortcuts, and set Ctrl F as a new shortcut. Use shortcut and as we can see, the defined shortcut is displayed beside the menu item. If we like to remove all user defined shortcuts of the current user account and restore the original factory default shortcuts, 
simply select Options, Restore Default Shortcuts. Buttons or menu items which can be toggled do have a third option in their context menus. Let's have a look at them. Right click for example on toggle button view, show tracking curves. We can find here a third option within the context menu, save default state. This button defines if this function should be enabled or disabled when starting 3D E4. It always saves the current state as default. One useful hint. If we changed many states during a project, it is possible to reload the initial state of all toggle buttons in all windows, editors or browsers. For this purpose, select Options, Reload Default Toggle States. Alright, next, let's have a look why there are buttons with an orange colored label. The answer is very simple, 3DE4's functionality can be extended with scripts written in Python. All these scripts can be placed within the display area or menus. To differentiate these scripts from built-in functions, those menu items and buttons are colored orange. Scripts, of course, have also a context menu containing a specific function for Python scripts. Let's right-click on a button based on a Python script and we see there's a new entry called Edit Source Code. After selecting this menu item, a script editor opens with the source code of the selected script displayed. Here we can edit the source code within the big text field. If we like a different editor for this purpose, we can set a third party editor as the standard editor. This can be done in the preferences. In menu options, open preferences. In text field text editor, we can set the path to a text editor we like to use. This is done very differently for every operating system, so please have a look at help pages which demonstrate how to open a text field application with terminal commands. Since we already opened the preferences, let's have a look at some other options. Above the text editor text field, we see other text fields for defining default search paths for various groups of files like 3D4 projects, image files, Python scripts. The buttons on the left open a standard file requester in which we can specify the respective default directory. Next, with the look and feel controls, we can modify the appearance of 3D4's user interface. Let's play around with the first four parameters. As we can see, it is possible to customize the look of the entire interface according to our wishes. Ok, we learned about menus, buttons, context menus and customizations. Next, let's have a look at different elements which can be added to the main window for extending its functionality, the so-called panes. A pane we already got to know is the navigation pane at the main windows button. Other panes are specifically designed for performing specific tasks such as creating and editing objects, read statistical information and edit curves and parameters. These panes are fundamental in the workflow within 3D Equalizer 4 and can be found in menu config. The config menu provides functions to add panes in a horizontal or vertical orientation. Let's click on add vertical pane, object browser and then add horizontal pane, deviation browser. Very good, two different pane types, the object browser and deviation browser were added to the main window. Their functions will be explained in detail in part 2 of the introductory tutorial. Here let's just concentrate on UI concepts within 3D E4. As we can see, each pane has its own config menu. 3D E4 allows to add a pane at different positions depending on which config menu was used. Let's add some other vertical and horizontal oriented panes using different config menus. All panes seem to be a bit small and if they would contain information, we would not really be able to read them, so let's simply resize them. 
Every pane can be resized by using the small bar with the three white colored dots. The white triangles resize all adjacent panes. It is also possible to modify their positions after adding them to the main window. Just the navigation pane's position is fixed. Clicking on the small arrow buttons will move the selected pane up and down or left and right according to the selected button. Next, all panes can be separated from the main windows to additional windows. Within menu config of any pane, let's select item Move to separate window. And uh, here we go, the pane is now in its own window. Of course, here we can add all panes to this window with menu config as well to have all panes we need in just one window in case we don't like them in the display area. Last button close will, you can guess, close the selected window or pane. By the way, every pane can be opened directly in a separated window selecting them from menu Windows in the navigation pane. As we have seen, adding and arranging some panes is quite easy, but can take some time. For the different stages in 3D's workflow, different arrangements of panes are useful. 3D Equalizer 4 is able to recall all kinds of pane arrangements with the help of environments. Let's have a closer look at these environments and in the navigation pane, Select menu Environments. We see there are different predefined environments within this menu. Let's select Basic. All formerly open panes are closed and another set of panes was opened and arranged. Let's play around with different environments, ending with Environment Default. Okay, we are now in the same environment we were at the beginning of this video. But 3D Forest UI isn't that strange than before, right? Next, we will create our own environment. Let's open and arrange some panes as we've done before. It doesn't matter which panes, we can go as crazy as we like to. Perfect, now select Environments, Configure. Requester Configure Environments open and we see the same list of environments like in the menu. Let's click on button Add to add our new pane arrangement to that list. A new list item was added to the list in the requester and already in the menu as well. Now think of a fancy name, enter and the last step is saving the current arrangement as an environment. Click on button Save and here we go, we have a new environment. If we like to have this environment as our default as startup, simply click on button Make Startup and it appears automatically when 3D4 was started. Close the requester and select a different environment, then again our new one. A second way of having a custom environment at startup is saving the current layout. Menu item Options Save current window layout saves the current arrangement of all 3 d 4s windows including separated windows. When 3 d 4 is restarted, the save window layout is automatically been restored. This can also be done automatically by activating the automatic saving of window layouts. Open Preferences and activate toggle button Automatically Save Window Layout. Perfect, now we know about menus, buttons, panes, environments and windows, which is basically everything we need to know about 3 d 4 UI right now. There's just one feature left worth demonstrating, a second main window. 3D Equalizer 4 allows to open multiple main windows at the same time, so let's do this. Within menu Windows, select item New 3 d 4 Main Window. A new main window appears, let's arrange both windows beside each other. Alright, we have two fully functional main windows on our desktop. What can we do with them? We can display two different environments, different controls or two tracking points in two different cameras 
if there are multiple cameras in the project. Mainly things that may speed up the workflow at some points. One thing we should remember here is that windows are bound to the main window from which it was opened. For example, in the left main window, let's open the object browser. Label view A in the title bar indicates it belongs to main window view A. Ok, we learn 3D Equalizer Force UI provides different types of panes and windows for specific tasks within the workflow. All these elements can be arranged differently and being saved as environments according to our wishes. Single and multiple shortcuts can be assigned to buttons and menu items through context menus. Further, Python scripts can be added to menus and display area as buttons and also be edited through their context menus. Well done, the first introduction into the user interface of 3D Equalizer 4 is complete. In part 2 of the introductory tutorial, we start using this UI for our first project. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you again in part 2.